Three, two, one. My name is Louise and I make fashion and engineering videos here on YouTube. In this video, I'm going to be recreating the fire transformation look from Disney's 2021 Cruella movie. And yes, real flames will be involved. I'll be making both the cape and the red dress underneath and some real life graphics of the fire transformation. Garment transformations have always caught my eye, whether on the runway or in movies and film. There's always a true wow moment. Some of my favorite transformation garments include Alexander McQueen's Robotic Painters. A blank dress was used as a painting canvas. Zendaya wore a Tommy Hilfiger Cinderella gown that lit up from the bottom hem all the way up to the top. Hussein Chilean has made countless transformations. He did one recently with water dissolving the garment, revealing another garment underneath. He's also done the mechanical transforming dress where you pull part of the dress and a new dress falls and forms right before your eyes. Westworld used this technique to design a dress for Dolores. And of course the list can't be complete without mentioning the girl on fire from The Hunger Games. Let me know out of these transformations which one's your favorite and if there are any that you personally love that I missed. Let me know in the comments below and I might recreate another one. Looking at the outfit, the cape is beautifully constructed using seam lines on the hood and the front, adding dimension to a very basic satin cape. The red dress has a form-fitting strapless bodice with satin strips creating a fiery collar, swooping down as if it was engulfed in swirling flames. The mermaid skirt is poofed out by some nude tulle, peeking out and giving it that volume at the bottom. Without further ado, here's how I made the Cruella transformation outfit. The first thing I did was go to the fabric store. I bought an off-white satin for the cape, red satin for the dress, and a maroon for the matching gloves. I also bought yards and yards of nude tulle for volume in the skirt, feathers and beads for the mask, and zippers to finish the garments off. I'm gonna start off with draping on the mannequin, drawing out the design lines on the dress. So now that I have my design lines, I'm going to start draping my muslin. I pin the fabric, making sure to keep the fabric smooth as I go along. Once I get a pattern piece draped, I draw the design lines onto the muslin and cut it out. Once cut out, make sure to hold your pattern piece up like the large bass you just caught. I transferred my draped pieces onto paper and trued all of the edges. I used these pattern pieces to cut the bodice out of the red satin. After sewing together, I fit the bodice on my adjustable mannequin, which is closer to my size. Before working on the outer skirt, I made a simple skirt out of lining that I could add the tulle to. I put the skirt on the dress form to see where I wanted to add the tulle, and I ruffled a few layers and added them on. Then I patterned another simple skirt for the outer layer. I did a fancy pattern making trick where I put the center front and center back on the same line and folded it over so it's on the same piece of paper. I then cut the skirt out of the red satin. I stopped the skirt hem where the volume begins because I'm going to drape that part. I draped the mermaid skirt by pinning fabric along the skirt edge and cutting away excess fabric. I then went in by hand and attached it to the skirt. Now for the most time consuming part of all of this project, adding the fiery strips. I started with a solid collar that I could anchor all of the neck strips to. I then laid out the outline on the front and back of the dress form. I then took the remaining red fabric and folded it on the bias to cut out as many bias strips as I possibly could. And this wasn't even all of them. I used most of the rest of the fabric. I took the first strip to pin in place and see where it landed and it was the perfect length. 
I then pin the front strips and back strips and worked my way down the dress, pinning and tacking as I went. The end effect on the skirt is stunning and I love the way that it swirls. I also wanted to highlight this fancy detail that I did. I wanted the strips to be continuous from the neck all the way down to the bottom hem. So I did some magic around the zipper. I put in clasps that you can unattach strips from to use the zipper, then cover the zipper back up once you're in the dress. Moving on to the cape. First, I'd like you to meet my model for this project. Everyone say hello. Hello. I'm using a small mannequin to prototype the cape because it'd be a lot of fabric for a full size one. I took arm, height, and over the head measurements to make the cape pattern. I used my holy grail pattern making book as my reference for the design. It's one of those textbooks that you actually use after you graduate. And I highly recommend this book to anyone who wants to learn more about pattern making. I cut the pattern out of muslin using today's sponsor, Mini Coconut Cream. These cans hold down projects of any size especially small ones. After cutting out the muslin, I pinned it together to test fit on my model. It fit pretty well with only minor adjustments needed. To create the radiating seams, I cut the front pattern piece along the lines I wanted and re-sewed them together using my miniature sewing machine. Did I buy this mini sewing machine for this project? Yes. Was purchasing this machine worth the pun? I also put the radiating seams in the hood as well and sewed the tiny, tiny seams on my tiny, tiny machine. And here's the final mini cape on my model. And might I add, they are working it. Then I made another cape that was knee sized. You can clearly tell I'm having way too much fun in this cape, but it came out really well and I'm really pleased with it. The design lines are extremely clear on the cape and hood and the hood drapes so well. While I was making this large cape, I wanted a way to fit the hood while it was still on my mannequin. So I designed some 3D printed heads. The first shape was fine, but not ideal. It looked more like a light bulb. The second one was much more headlight and I liked the minimalist look of it. But I thought I'd go one step further and add some facial features in. Maybe I'd even scan my head and print it in the future. Then I tried this detailed head out and I said absolutely not. And it's currently facing the wall in my workshop to not creep anyone out at night. I can't wait to see it with the full wig underneath. To complete the entire look, I need some accessories. Each look is paired with elbow length satin gloves. I cut the pattern out, sewed the little quarter inch seam allowance around all of the fingers. And this was some expert level sewing. After I finished the red pair, I then made a second pair in white. I've linked the pattern I used for the gloves in order to hide my identity as much as possible while crashing the party, I needed to have a masquerade mask. I could have just cut this by hand, but then I wouldn't have been able to introduce you to my Cricut machine. If you're not familiar with it, this machine can take your 2D design and cut it out of any material you so choose. I cut the mask out of some leather scrap I had on hand and bedazzled it with black beads and feathers. I tied ribbon to the ends to secure the mask around my head. I bought a half black, half white wig, but I had to take it to the salon because it didn't have the right amount of zhuzh I needed. How are you doing? Her. Good? Halfway there. Her. I curled a bunch of tight curls and set them with bobby pins and took them out while watching some of the Tokyo Olympics. And with all the accessories done and all of the clothing done, here are the final looks. Now for the fire portion of the video. 
During my research, I came across a material called nitrocellulose, alternatively called flash paper. One of its many uses is in magic shows for magic tricks. This paper, when lit, gives off a quick, vibrant burst of flame and doesn't leave any ash residue, so it's kind of perfect. Nitrocellulose is made by taking paper, which is cellulose, and soaking it in a nitric acid. You can make them at home, but I decided to just buy some from a magic shop. I got these large sheets here, and they also come in little tiny sheets as well. My dream is to make a human-sized transformation dress and make the underdress fireproof and film it in slow-mo. That'd be really cool. I'm gonna light one for you now. Ta-da! <laughs> I could do that all day. Now I'm gonna make that little mini cape out of flash paper, use some green screen effects, and let's see how it goes. Master of understatement, as usual. Here's to me. You've made it to the end! I just want to say thank you so much for watching my video. If you're interested in more costume design, fashion design projects, then please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions for me or any ideas for future projects, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments below. So thank you for coming along the journey with me.